Welcome to Take the Lead Radio with Dr. Diane Hamilton, where she interviews some of the most successful leaders, entrepreneurs, authors, speakers, and other individuals who will inspire you to take the lead in your career and personal life. And now, here is Dr. Diane Hamilton. Well, I am here with Marianne Gunther, and I'm going to read this just to make sure I get it properly okay. uh, stated. It, and she is the CEO at, of Big Yam, the Parsons Agency, and Sneaky Big Studios, which are sister companies under Bob Parsons Yam Worldwide. She's a former executive VP at GoDaddy. She is the president of the Arizona Advertising Guild and serves on multiple boards and is a fixture in the philanthropic community here in Arizona. So you're a busy girl and- <laughs> I tend to be. Wow, and we are here at Sneaky Big Studios and this is a really impressive place. And so I wanna to talk to you about Thank all you. these things you do. Absolutely, I'm excited to do so. This is gonna be fun. Um, now, first of all, I kind of was interested in going back to your background before you even started with GoDaddy, just to find out. Now, you had a medical background? Did I read that? I do. Uh huh. Yeah, so after I received my BS in biology from University of Iowa, I came down here and attended Midwestern University, and I received a Master's of Medical Sciences um, from huh. the campus here in Glendale. Wow. And from there, I also became certified as a physician assistant. You're kidding. So I'm not sure how much I you know about. I wonder if I called about. on you because I was a pharmaceutical rep for AstraZeneca for Oh, you were? Forever. What did you, what did, I what had Palmacort and Rhinocort and Tenorman and I used Zestral. to prescribe those all the time. <laughs> well, were you here in town as a PA? I was, I, yeah, I was. I worked downtown at Pulmonary Associates. Where, where's that in town? Because that probably was my territory. It is directly, well, they have lots of offices now. They had three back then. But it is directly across from what was called Good Samaritan. Yeah, that McDowell. was my territory. I we Isn't had to funny? have met. That's that, so I bet funny. we did. That is great. Yeah, I worked there from about. That's so funny. Oh my gosh, I'm losing track of time. O two to O five. Oh, you probably just started right after I left. I had left by then. Okay. Yeah. Small world. Well, PA, that's a tough job. So you've got that training on top of all this training. You're obviously uh, it was very a fun educated. job. Oh yeah. Well, that helps you probably in a lot of other aspects. Of, you know, you, does everybody call you like you're their doctor and they want to have uh, free advice? Oh, they <laughs> used to. I kind of shut that down. <laughs> well, I, I know I get some of that. And I, um, I, I think that it's, it's such an interesting field to get see how medicine has changed. But you decided not to go in that direction. And you decided to go, you know, you were with, Big, uh, with GoDaddy for a while. When did GoDaddy actually start? GoDaddy was founded in 1997. And I joined GoDaddy part-time in 2002. So as I was working full-time as a physician assistant downtown, I would go there um, in the evening sometimes, and I would help with various things. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, I worked uh, primarily in two different departments, which may not sound like a lot of fun, but to me, they were a blast. Uh -huh. So at one point, I worked in domain services, and I would help with transferring of domain names into GoDaddy, and sometimes transferring domain names out of GoDaddy. And then okay. the other department where I worked was the fraud department. So we would huh. look for triggers of what would look like fraudulent activity, and we would either dig into that or clear the order and kind of process it through. That's an interesting combination of things. What kind of things were like fraudulent activity that you were looking for? If um, the originating country didn't maybe uh -huh. was a little suspicious uh -huh. or things didn't match up for where their IP was, the order, and where the credit card was, um, and the billing address. Like, uh -huh. super fun thing, yeah. <laughs> well, that gave you a really strong uh, technology background, obviously, which you need to run this place, I imagine. Do, did you, uh, I'm, how was the transition? Now, you go from that to, to coming over here. Now, what, what, what happened? Now, this used to be, uh, wasn't it Carrie Mart's agency, right, at one point? Big what Yam, you, the Big Parsons Yam was? Agency mm -hmm. was. Okay. So Carrie ran a successful agency here in town for, I want to say, about three decades. Okay. Strong roots in public relations. And in 2000 and, uh, hold on, 2015? No, 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 2013. Mm -hmm. I think October 2013, uh -huh. that is when Bob Parsons and Carrie Martz decided to partner together okay. and the acquisition occurred. And then she continued to run the agency for a couple more years. And then in 2015, she decided to retire. And that's when I came over oh. to the agency. And that's 2015? 
2015, okay. yeah. Wow. Spring of 2015. So you've been doing this for several years. And I have. It's gone by like that. I've, you know, everybody talks about this place and the advertising That's good. agent. Yeah, I mean, well, in Arizona, which is what I want to talk to you about, really, okay. is what's happening in Arizona in terms of trying to bring uh, video and television and just production in general to Arizona because, you know, we're so close to California and, and mm -hmm. everything goes over there, which it's just now we're starting to see people interested in doing business here. I mean, there's a lot more interest than I've ever seen in the past. Are you seeing more of a We are seeing um, more jobs that mm -hmm. are either coming here or have interest in coming here, whether they be episodic in nature, like game shows. Mm -hmm. um, so we are seeing more interest mm -hmm. because they realize we are a really good second choice. Mm -hmm. We are their closest neighbor. Right. We have a pool of a deep pool of talent here in the city that can help, whether it be on the directing side, the producing side, um, grips and gaffers, and all the different mm -hmm. crew you right. need to pull off a production on a large scale, we have that here. And if you're on the accounting side, right, it tends to be less expensive too, yeah. which yeah. is great. And we have the flexibility because we are a right to work state. So we can work union, we can mm -hmm. work non-union. Mm -hmm. And it's nice when you are able to partner with somebody who has that flexibility. Well, you know, I've been in talks with people that wanted to do TV shows. And so I've had a lot of questions that come up in my mind lately. So I, this is a great opportunity to ask you about how this Perfect. all works. So, um, okay, so this is, there's no studio that compares to this in Arizona. I mean, there's other studios, but this For one sure. is kind of unique in how what you offer. And I can imagine that you do a lot of um, the advertising um, videos of creation and that type of thing. But what about television shows. Are people coming to you to, to start talking about doing maybe pilots or talking to you about doing um, reality series or anything like that? Or is it more just uh, television ads? I'm, I'm just curious what, what realm you guys are to dealing with. To date, mm -hmm. we have primarily partnered on the television ads, so the mm -hmm. commercial side, mm -hmm. and then lots of other types of content around that. Right. Whether it be product videos or CEO road shows or podcast development, radio show develop or radio spot development, uh -huh. we are starting to see um, some folks come to us for pilot creation. Mm -hmm. So we have recently, in the last two months or so, had some fairly deep discussions, and uh, there's one that's looming on the horizon oh, that might know. happen in early <laughs> June. Uh -huh. So it would be really neat to see that to see that take off. Well, okay, so how do you, do you have executive producers that live in, who live in Arizona? I mean, where do you get the people for that kind of stuff and production, you know, all the, the rest of it when you want to sell it to the different, uh, you know, markets? Who does mm -hmm. all that? Great question. Mm -hmm. So it, it depends on the type of content. Mm -hmm. If it is like the discussion we are talking through for this pilot to take mm -hmm. place in early June, mm -hmm. they will bring their executive producer with them. Okay. And the running joke has been, mm -hmm. especially for someone who's in LA mm -hmm. and has to deal with that crazy traffic, right, right. Oh, yeah. that depending on where they are going from and to in the time of the day, they're like, we could easily go over <laughs> to any of our local airports, mm -hmm. hop a flight, even over to Sky Harbor, uh -huh. and we could be there at your studio faster than if we were to do the, the haul in the traffic. I'll bet. It's probably yeah, I, I imagine it's gotten so bad there. So it's it's very easy to bring over some of those key players mm -hmm. when it comes to a project of that magnitude. On the flip side, we have produced commercials and other projects here where their talent, they live here. Mm -hmm. Some of them live here and work here full time. Some of those folks mm -hmm. live here. And unfortunately, they've been having to go outside of Arizona to work. Right. So they go or on a per project basis or a Monday through Wednesday or Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. and then they come back here for the weekend. Mm -hmm. But they want to work here. Right. Because they live here and they want to do everything here. It, I mean, it, th you're getting a lot of people moving here, especially with the tax changes and, and everything. It mm -hmm. gets expensive, obviously, to live in California. So do you see this becoming more of a hub for production, Arizona, as compared to other areas? That's what we hope. We hope yeah. to see. Uh -huh. And uh, there are lots of uh, other great studios in town, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. This is the only studio of this magnitude here mm -hmm. now. And we do hope that there are other competitors that mm -hmm. come on board in future years right. so that we can make this a hub of production. It is quite busy over in LA mm -hmm. and rates are high, studios are booked, there's first, second holds all the time. Right. So we want to be a very good second option for them. Well, you have a huge facility. Now you could probably have an audience here, right? 
We can. Uh-huh. Yeah, we can easily easily build in an audience. Um, I know that we're here, but there are 4,000 <laughs> square feet around us. We it have a massive. 70 by 40 foot psych wall, mm-hmm. this beautiful black drape that can mm-hmm. go all the way around the studio that mm-hmm. we can see right now. Uh-huh. And um, we can easily bring in bleachers or other type of formats to accommodate an audience, a live audience. Okay, so they you film the show here, then ha- it, are you... How are you getting this, the shows out to the networks or to Hulu? or wh- How do they get it from there? We typically, um, well, depending on the type of project, again, right, I keep right. saying that because uh-huh. it really is. They're also different. We're, we're so flexible uh-huh. how we work with our, mm-hmm. with our customers. We can produce the content here in this room, and then that can be the end of our relationship. Right. Or mm-hmm. we can then help further in the process. So on our left-hand side, just mm-hmm. a little bit further down the hall, we have post-production, which oh, includes, I wow. you got to see it, mm-hmm. okay. um, the five editing suites, we have a color correction suite. So we can continue to work with our customers on that end mm-hmm. until they have a finished product. And then in that case, they're gonna take it back to their distribution partners or whoever um, they're partnering with to to produce the content. Right. Well, you know, it's it's a very interesting um, setup to see everything. I got to see your green room, and you you really have everything. You, you, Did you get need... to see the broadcast facility, our production control room? I saw that with all the TVs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that, I, that was really impressive. I mean, I don't know what he was doing in there, but it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really something to see. You probably uh-huh. saw our studio uh-huh. engineer, Tom. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's crazy yes. smart. Yes, he was. Yes, yeah. definitely. And so it's been really interesting, but you're also dealing with advertising. And so I, that was television and you're, you're dealing with other aspects of production. So tell me about this Arizona advertising. Uh, what, what, I want to see my notes. Uh, Arizona Advertising Guild. Guild. Okay. We call it AZAG for short. Kind of cool and kitschy yeah, it is, name. Yeah, it is cool. <laughs> so in this, actually, it's really interesting that we're in this room. Mm-hmm. So in October of 2016, mm-hmm. we were, we there were a number of ad agency CEOs that were invited to a happy hour here, um, including folks like um, OH Partners, Santee Integrated, um, Six Degrees. Mm -hmm. And we were talking through, from an ad agency perspective, what's working really well in Arizona Mm -hmm. and where are we having struggles. Mm -hmm. And as we did a round table, we were discussing our uh, challenges, and we were all having some of the same challenges. Mm-hmm. And they were around primarily two factors. Mm-hmm. One, that we are growing, and it's difficult to find um, really good talent. So, right. um, you know, how do we maybe pull our resources together and our platform, create this common platform of communication to attract talent into Arizona? Right. Because as somebody in the industry, when they're potentially looking for a move, they may look for a move from Madison Avenue to maybe L.A. or Chicago or a different market, mm-hmm. Portland or Austin, right. one of the kind of up and coming areas. Mm-hmm. But they don't generally consider Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And that can be for a number of reasons. Right. We'll save that for another conversation. <laughs> but it's just yeah, this, it hasn't been done here, this stereotype mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. they don't consider this a huge market for that. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the challenges. And the second challenge we had was around how do we let some of these larger brands know that we are a serious ad agency Mm -hmm. um, environment here, a community? Right. Because if you kind of pull up the covers and look in within each of these groups, like OH Partners or Santee, Mm -hmm. we're working with some really well-known companies. Right. But unfortunately, we hadn't had the platform where we could tell the story the collective story, Mm -hmm. not one individual story was really getting that national attention. Mm -hmm. So we decided to band together, something that we, from our research, have found that has never been done before, anywhere Mm -hmm. that we can find in in our country. So we are competitors at heart. Yeah, right. And usually it's very, Uh uh, it's competitive in nature. So Uh we decided we're going to create this this non-for-profit entity called Arizona Advertising Guild. And it is a mission-based organization to tell our story. So how often do you, what do you, do you have get togethers like on a regular basis? How does this work? So we have a quarterly board meeting. Mm-hmm. We just had it last week. We should uh-huh. have invited you. <laughs> and, um, happy to. yeah. <laughs> and uh, the board members, there are five board members. Mm-hmm. We have biweekly calls. We mm-hmm. talk about what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, we have, um, it was really neat inter, 
um, agency working group mm -hmm. on a couple of different fronts that we've created. And again, we haven't ever heard of this being done before. Yeah. So our creative director from Big Guillaume is on it. Mm -hmm. Then we have an account director from a different um, agency. Mm -hmm. We have a copywriter from a different agency from um, Anderson Advertising. And mm -hmm. these guys have been working together collectively to create our brand, our website, our collateral, anything else that we need. And to see groups come together from right. different agencies and work, That's it amazing. has been mind blowing. Well, and they work together to, to, they all get win if they all work together. As if they compete, yeah. they're not gonna get anything. No. Right. So we officially launched in November uh -huh. of this last year, 2017. And uh, we have a couple of things that we're doing. Uh -huh. So we've collectively pulled funds together. Again, something that hasn't happened between right. competitors. Yeah, right. And we're going out there pretty hard and heavy trying to get our name in front of the key teammates in the ad industry mm -hmm. so that when they're considering a move, consider Arizona. Mm -hmm. Come to us. Mm -hmm. And we will soon be announcing that our first um, transplant, and I believe she's coming from Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. will be moving to Arizona um, to one of the ad agencies who found us through our efforts. Wow. Yeah, so, so it's, it's it's growing. It's, it's coming to fruition. Well, you've got all this going on. I'm curious now, we have what you said his name was... His name is Ralph. Ralph. Yeah. I don't know if you could see Ralph, which is the sneaky big guy. He's a raccoon. Yep. So sneaky big and big yam. Where, where are these names from? I'm just curious because <laughs> I'm sure you get that a lot. Well, um, okay. We'll talk about we'll talk about yam. Okay. Have you? Do you know what yam? I don't know why yam you, stands for. No, so I, our parent company, Yam Worldwide. Uh -huh, well, I knew that. Okay. Um, as but why you am? Bob Parsons mm -hmm. was leaving the day-to-day -day activities at GoDaddy and mm -hmm. was starting some other endeavors, mm -hmm. he, he needed to have a parent company over them. And, uh -huh. and he was born and raised in Baltimore. Okay. And while, while he lived there, him and his friends had this expression with each other that they would use. And it was meant as something fun, something mm -hmm. you would only say to a good friend. Right. Uh -huh. And it's, you're a mess. <laughs> So uh -huh. they would, it's oh, never meant as an insult. Uh -huh. It's like, uh -huh. Diane, you're a mouse. That's so in my yam. Yeah. I so, and so that's, uh -huh. no, that's go great. daddy, uh -huh. yam. He likes, He's to have fun. Uh -huh. he likes to have fun with names. Uh -huh. So that is our parent company name. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And as we were rebranding the ad agency when Carrie Martz retired, uh -huh. we went through the process that we would typically do. And we right. had a few names that we narrowed it down to. And we decided that we would attach back to our parent company. And we are Big Yam. Okay. And it actually works yeah. out really well because uh -huh. as we are initiating discussions with potential customers, uh -huh. they wouldn't need to work with us if there wasn't some type of mess within the organization. Right. So they need help solving right. it. Right. Right. And so it, it allows for the conversation to start. Yeah. It's well, fun. So, so, and then... Sneaky big? Sneaky big. That's a little different. <laughs> it comes from a golf term. Oh. So, uh -huh. do you golf? A little bit. And huh. yes, it doesn't, I think Bob Parsons owns some kind of a golf course or something yes, in town, Parsons right? Yes, Extreme uh -huh. Golf. Yeah, right. And Scottsdale National the Golf uh -huh. Course. Uh -huh. hey, we should go to the range sometime. We should. That would yeah. be fun. Yeah. I'm, I do have a, a membership at a golf club. I just don't get there very often. I'm terrible, though. Well, so let's if, go. I'll make you feel really good about your game. <laughs> so, <laughs> no sneaky big comes from a golf term. Uh -huh. uh, it's sneaky long. So oh. if, let's just say Amber, who's mm -hmm. over here, mm -hmm. were to go up um, on mm -hmm. the tee box and get her driver out, and mm -hmm. she were to crank a drive down the middle of the fairway, uh -huh. 250 yards, uh -huh. she's petite. You really wouldn't expect that from uh -huh. her. Oh, okay. So you would say, well, I was sneaky long. <laughs> totally I impressed. I got it. So we are sneaky big here uh -huh. in the studio because uh -huh. you wouldn't expect a studio of this magnitude right. and um the technology we have housed within it to be in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're sneaky big. It's, That's a, it's great. a pleasant surprise. Well, you know what else is a pleasant surprise is, is a female CEO and one with blue hair. I love the back of your hair. She's got Thanks. a little blue going, which you're, you're very hip for a CEO. <laughs> you, and think about it. We get this Well, I image. kids saw this a couple of years ago and they were like, no, Would you do, Mom? Oh, go really? change that back. You kept it for a while. It's cute. Yeah, I've had yeah. it for a couple of years. Yeah. So, so what's it like to be a f head of a major company being CEO, female in uh, technology where we're hearing we don't have enough females. I mean, do you, you probably get noticed uh, quite a bit. Uh, is that, does that come with pressure or is that, or do you feel like you need to set the standard? I mean, w w what is that like? Such an interesting question. <laughs> 
I guess in some ways I don't notice it because mm-hmm. it's just who I am. Uh huh. Right. And um, as I take a look at, you know, we talked about Arizona Advertising Guild, AZAG, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the folks that are members, and there's Michelle Olson and Amy and um, Sheila. So there mm-hmm. are a lot of women mm-hmm. that are running companies right. and ad agencies, mm-hmm. which, to your point, isn't typical. Right. It isn't. So maybe maybe Phoenix is going to be we're the one that really it. turns that yeah. right out of it. We turn <laughs> that around. And if you look upstairs... Uh, within the teammate roster of Big Yam, mm-hmm. we are the majority are females. Wow! Again, which mm-hmm. is unusual it is. for an ad agency, right? But we have um, females in key positions, leading departments, and mm-hmm. it's just the way we. And back at GoDaddy, many of the executive vice presidents and on the executive staff were females. Christine well, and Naima and Barb. Well, they need to come to Arizona to get all of these bright women for these positions, apparently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've got a lot of them here. But, well, so now that you have all this success, and um, I think a lot of people uh, – would use these studios for, I mean, I know so many people that have radio shows like I have, you know, Mm -hmm. they could do production here or they do podcasts or different things that you guys do here. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are trying to monetize what they do and that can be a challenge for that industry. Now, do you have any ability to help with sponsorship with those type of situations? I mean, how, what advice would you give somebody that has a show that they were trying to get sponsors? I know how hard that is. For it some. really is difficult it because is. there are lots of players in the market. Right. So I think my two pieces of advice would be, A, you have to look for a natural fit. Right, right. And unfortunately, many folks look for an easy fit, mm-hmm. maybe not what's natural. It yeah. might take a little bit of a longer curation mm-hmm. for that to happen. Right. And then second, my other piece of advice would be think differently. Hmm. So maybe Just, think about what isn't mm-hmm. what isn't occurring right now and what could be. Yeah. You got to, because everyone does what they think they should do. And mm-hmm. it's just too many players in that right. particular lane. So you got to like, what are the other lanes out here that maybe uh-huh. people haven't thought of? Well, that's, that's uh, playing right in. Uh, I'm working on a book on curiosity, so I'm always interested in thinking outside the norm, you know, in the box. So you obviously are a curious person because you go right to that. And you're, have you always been uh, naturally curious if you've gone from all these different industries? I don't know. We'd have to ask my mom and my dad. <laughs> they probably would say yes. I, yeah. uh, when I was growing up, my uh-huh. girlfriend and I, Nicole, we were the entrepreneurs of the neighborhood. We yeah. would be out selling uh-huh. Whatever we could think of, uh-huh. and we would go door to door and sell our trades of the week uh-huh. and shovel driveways. So, I, I, uh-huh. in some ways, yes, and in some ways, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, obviously, you're very successful, and this has been um, very interesting to find out about all the things that you're working on here. And I think a lot of people would probably love to know more about how can they find out like how more about this studio, more about uh, your advertising agency, your you know, everything that you're working on. Is there some major connection, one website or several websites you no, can share? No, there's <laughs> multiple websites. W- would you like to um, share a few? Yeah, for sure. So okay. if anyone's interested in learning more about the studio here, I would suggest that you go to sneakybig.com. And on the website, we have lots of information around the services that we offer, how we can partner, uh, our rates, and we have prior client work Mm -hmm. that we've done. So you can see a sample of whom we've worked with in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, through the website, there are a phone number, there's a contact field. So if somebody wants to actually come in and meet us face to face and get a tour of the facility, we do that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. It was a great tour. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Who gave you? Do you uh, remember who gave you your Well, tour? you know, Valerie had invited me. Yeah. And uh, I, I got to see everything. I'm trying to think of who all I, I met so many people. I, it wasn't just one person. But, I think uh, that's the fun thing yeah. about when we bring uh-huh. folks in uh-huh. is we're going into the editing suites and we're going right. into the production control room uh-huh. and into Mike's room. So <laughs> almost always, whether you guys like it or not, we'll stop and say, hey, here's who we're bringing through the studio. And uh-huh. this is Mike and this is Tyler. And yeah. so we'll chat with folks along the way. So they can get a feel for who will they be working with if they do come here. Right. And then on the agency side, we do have a great website, biggam.com. Mm-hmm. And again, it's going to have the different services that we offer. It's going to have uh, some of our client work, uh, case studies, contact information. And we're happy to 
speak with whoever's interested in talking with us, whether that be face-to-face or a quick phone call. And I think that one thing that in some ways sets us apart and in other ways not because other um, studios and ad agencies out there are doing the same thing, but we're mm-hmm. super responsive. Uh-huh. So if somebody reaches out to us, yeah, by darn, true. we're on the phone with them within yeah. like an hour. Yeah, I, I did yeah. notice that, that you guys were good. Good, at that yes, makes me I, feel I good. I verify that's, that's <laughs> very true. So this has been really fun, and thank you for letting me use your studio for this. This Absolutely. is wonderful. It's, it's much more glamorous than my in my normal Zoom uh, <laughs> Exchange. Well, we're happy to help. We're, this but, is fun. Yes, and uh, this has been a great uh, t- chance to see what you guys are doing, and I'm looking forward to seeing. We got to bring more business to Arizona, so absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with all this, and uh, this was a, a great opportunity. And uh, we will uh, hopefully just check in and see how it goes in the future. That sounds like a plan. Great, thank you, Marianne Gunther. Thank you.